and we love you. Anyway, we're talking about another person who is very special to our community, who does a lot for everybody. And this is Gary Wright. I'm sure you've all heard of him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was the uh, placement in the uh, Strasser versus Spring uh, last, action last action lawsuit. And he's also an awesome activist. So here you go, Gary. Thanks, guys. I know it's hot, so I, I promise I'm just taking my whole life to work up here. I just want to briefly tell you why we're here today and what got us here. As she said, I was a veteran. I was 19 years old. I took the oath. And at the time, I really understood what it meant because it's, we swore to defend the Constitution against enemies both foreign and domestic. And at the time I took the oath, I had no idea what a domestic enemy was. I mean, it just made no sense to me. What are we talking about? Well, it turned out that uh, I was in the Navy on my ship. There was a lot of bullying going on. So I reported it to my chain of command. And because of that, I was outed and I was discharged under the last hotel. It took 17 years to fight before he won Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Each battle gets a little bit easier because we learn from the people and the sin on the shoulders of the people that came before us. But we have to keep that going because the fight's far from over. We fought Don't Ask, Don't Tell. We got rid of that and I moved back to Alabama. And of course, uh, you're familiar with the Defense of Marriage Act and all the, the federal legislation there was involved. The, the moment that Alabama passed there, there was a cut and paste of the federal amendment. So I knew the moment that DOMA was stricken as unconstitutional, I wrote the legislature that night and I said, okay guys, let's, let's bring our laws up to the rest of the country and let's go ahead and repeal the Defense of Marriage Act and the other constitutional amendments that were passed. Of course, that never happened. They just dug in and fought harder. So when we did get the uh, marriage equality fight here, um, I had been with my partner for 18 years. And I was determined that I was going to get married. In, in my home, we could have gone to another state to get married because it was legal there, but we were like, no, we're going to fight for what's right in our state, and we're going to make it happen here. Yes! Lord, you're one of us to fight. There were 68 judges in 67 counties. He wanted us to fight a lawsuit in every county. And I said, that is not going to happen. So I called every attorney I knew. I got turned down and I got laughed at. But finally I reached home that would listen. We filed a class action lawsuit. My husband and I joined the Scott Reverse Restraint lawsuit. And we got the injunction that blocked. Roy Moore, the Alabama Supreme Court, the Alabama legislature, and I have a permanent injunction against all 68 probate judges in Alabama. Yay! But this, this is not over. I mean, we're going to get rid of Roy today. There's only seven canons of judicial, judicial ethics, and they're pretty simple, three basic things. He violated six out of seven of them. Number six has to do with financial transactions, and I bet if we dug hard enough, he probably violated that one too. But Today he's facing six out of the seven, and I have great confidence that he'll never return to bench. And if there's anything I can do about it, he'll never return to power in any office in Alabama. Yes! Oh, wow. And what people don't keep, I keep hearing over my shoulder that this is the law of the land. No, I have the injunction and it proves that marriage equality is the law of the land. Yes! Yeah. But. Moore loves to, to create chaos and confusion. Right now, today, there are 14 counties in Alabama where no one can get married. It's almost worse for those people because these counties went from denying the constitutional right of marriage to just a handful of people to everyone in the county. That, we're in the worst shape of those counties now than before, so we can't give up. This is more about marriage as well. And I think one of my failures is I didn't reach out to the straight community to let them know the danger that was going to happen to them. Because if they know that they wouldn't be able to get married now in those 14 counties, I think they would be standing on this side. <laughs> but I just want to ask all of y'all to please continue to find. We always get together in vigils and groups. Times like this, tragedy. We've got to start getting together, having some mandatory fun. I know we have our prides, and those can be kind of fun. 
us. It's only through sharing our stories that we inspire each other, and that's how we change the world. So, I just want to thank all of y'all. If no one helped me here, and I couldn't have made it through without all of your support and free to be and all of the activists and everyone who's been behind us the entire time. But just know the fight's not over and we got a ways to go. But when you go back to your homes tonight, tell your story and run for office. It's one thing we can't win unless we get people to register to vote and vote. But on my ballot, there's never any chances. So unless we can get true leadership on the ballot, then that's going to change. And that's going to take, I know government is, is such a toxic environment, it's going to take really special people to step up and take those roles. But if you look around, we've got them here. We need you guys in Austin. And I just want to thank all of you and don't keep up the fight. Love wins. They just haven't figured that out yet.